Okay, this is Mr. Palmer here with another little video on computer science. Uh, again, continuing with the theme of low level uh, languages and uh, the CPU instructions. So, before you continue with this one, make sure you go over your notes on volume and architecture and FTE cycle. Alright, this one is basically just going on a recap of the use of the accumulator registers and the program counter. Okay, uh, so can you explain the role and purpose of each of the registers in the CPU? That's what we're looking at. Now that you've looked at assembler, uh, you should be able to go back to the von Neumann um, architecture and uh, not understand in more detail what the different components of the CPU are and what they're doing. Okay, so the first one is the program counter. Remember, this tracks the location of the next instruction. Remember, there are two possibilities for incrementing uh, the value of the program counter. In normal execution, we're going to assume that the FDE is just incrementing to the next instruction, so the next mailbox in memory, the you know plus one to the next address. Uh, however, remember when with flow control, when you receive an instruction that is telling you to jump um, or branch to a different instruction, then when that instruction is interpreted, uh, the new instruction, the new address will be put into the program counter during that same cycle in order to force the instruction, the next instruction to be loaded um, corresponding to a different block of code. The second uh, one I'm talking about here is the memory address register. So remember, this is the... Um, the uh, address of the date of the instruction to be fetched. But the, this can be updated from two different locations. So either the program counter uh, will load in the address, uh, the next address that um, needs to be um, executed. So that will be at the beginning of the cycle. Or the current instruction register, when it splits the opcode and the operand, that will load in another address because that's um, the data that needs to be fetched or the new instruction that's going to be fetched. Um, uh, for the CPU to carry out. Then we've got the current instruction register. Remember that when the um, opcode comes in, uh, the opcode is basically matched and then executed so the CPU knows what it's going to carry out. A minimum here is that it, the, the minimum inst uh, instruction will contain an opcode and then sometimes it may be contain the opcode and the operand and in some architectures then we know that there can be more than one operand. Uh, but you just stick with the concept here of just the, the single operand. All right. Now, uh, then we've got the memory data register. So data is transferred into the CPU from memory or is transferred out from the CPU to the memory, okay? Uh, remember, all data and instructions are in binary, okay? So the CPU can't di distinguish between data and instructions. So when, remember, when you're looking at assembler, you're reading, you're reading mnemonics, okay? The CPU isn't handling those mnemonics, it's handling everything in binary. Uh, the memory data register is the only route in to the CPU after which point is determined which register the data actually needs to go into. Finally, uh, sorry not finally, but uh, going along we've got the accumulator. Uh, this one's quite straightforward because basically uh, as calculations are carried out in the arithmetic and logic unit, that's well a working register. The results from the working registers are stored in the accumulator temporarily because then another instruction is going to come in and then tell the accumulator uh, you know, uh, sorry, to take the data from the accumulator and move it to another register or to move it back into uh, into main memory. All right. Then we got the index register. That's not on my diagram. Okay. If you notice, I've cheated and just got the same uh, diagram out of my previous von Neumann architecture video. Okay. Uh, so the index register um, is to do with the different modes of addressing. Okay. When you have different modes of addressing, the operand must be in two parts, okay? Because it's going to have both the mode used, okay, and then the actual address itself, right? So the mode is explaining how the address should be interpreted, and the index register is used to adjust the address part of the operand. Uh, the next video coming in is going to actually talk about these addressing modes and explain how the index register is used, okay? Finally, you've got the control bus. Okay, the control bus is used by the control unit and it sends signals to all the other, all the other components of the CPU to tell them what to do and when to do it. Okay, um, so it's using sending signals basically down um, the pipe controlling the different operations and these can be memory read and write operations and they can be input and output operations as well. Okay, um, your what you probably need to do now is that you should need to go away go look at the fetch decode execute cycle and compare it to the more in-depth knowledge that you now have of how the CPU works all right and um, assembler as well okay and that will uh, obviously increase your understanding of how of what's going on during the fetch decode execute cycle 
All right, so you should basically be able to explain in detail now the role and purpose of each of the registers in the CPU. All right, thank you very much, and watch out for the final video of this little um, series explaining uh, different addressing modes in the uh, uh, in the process of executing instructions. See you later.